So we all know Justin Rhodes has taught everybody how to raise chickens. Well, I'm gonna give back and teach him how to catch flies. So we're gonna start this video out today in teaching Justin Rhodes how to catch flies. I got an email from a subscriber and they said, hey, did you see Justin Rhodes' video? He's not really catching any flies. He got the same trap that you guys have from the ranch fly trap. So I figured I'd give back and teach him how to catch flies like this. I mean, this is crazy. There's probably hundreds of flies in there. I don't even know if you can hear me because they're all in there making noise. So here's a fly trap that we've already used and tested. As you can see, look at all these flies. A bunch of dead flies in here, all in here. They're all dead, but I'm gonna empty the bowl, show you what to use for bait, how to hang it, and how to catch these flies once and for all and get rid of them. So I just took the bowl out and it still got some stuff that I had in there for a little bit. I just put some offy that you feed your goats and stuff, and I put a little bit of egg in there. It worked pretty good, but it's all dried out. So let's clean this out and put some new stuff in. So now that I got it empty, I'm gonna get a duck egg. You could probably use a chicken egg, but all you gotta do, crack it in there. Doesn't even have to be nice either. Just get as much of it in there as you can. So now you got your broken egg in there. And then the secret that I found is putting some cat poo in there. I know you got some cats, and so you could probably get some somewhere. If not, just any other poo that stinks. Stick it in there, and then uh, I think you're good to go. So now that I got my egg in there, I also got some fresh poo poo. Ew. That is some cat poop, some chicken poop, some goat poop, all the good poop that I could find here in our barn, and I'm gonna... Now I'm gonna stick it back in the trap, show you how it goes, and I'm gonna go hang it. So it's real easy, all you gotta do is it's got those rings on the bottom. Stick it between the uh, rings here. Just be careful you don't want to spill it because uh, eggs and doo-doo on you wouldn't be good. Just let it kind of sit in that ring below and that's all there is to it. I'm gonna leave all these flies in there because I don't want to empty them yet because that's free chicken food. So I'm gonna go hang this and show you that it works. So now that we have that trap going, I'm gonna put another one. So now that we got all our bait ready, I'm going to put it right over in the corner. We'll let it sit for a while. I got some other stuff to do, and then we'll come back and check on it and see how many flies we get. All right, so we're back to check on the uh, fly traps. I think it's been roughly an hour. We went and did some other stuff, came back, and look at this, got some flies. Got some flies in here. Of course, all these dead ones are from last time, but as you can tell, they are starting to collect in there. And just to prove that we're not lying, that's the trap from before that's still collecting them. The trap that's been here for about an hour. So I think it's safe to say these traps work, they're doing awesome. We'll check it again in the morning, but that'll be on another video. But guys, these traps are absolutely awesome. But I do know a lot of you are gonna ask, well, what do you do with all the flies? Do you just throw away the trap? What do you, you know, what do you do? I don't know. What we're gonna do is empty the flies out, feed them to our chickens and turkeys and all the ducks and stuff like that, and then reuse the traps over and over and over. As long as you don't tear the netting, it's gonna be fine. So let's go ahead and do that real quick and show you how easy it is to get free food for your animals plus reuse the traps. All right, so we're back to check the traps again, and look how many flies are in there. Even more than last time. This thing's doing awesome again. This one's catching even more but we're talking about this one today. So I'm going to take the trap out there, I'm gonna kill the flies real quick, and then feed them to my animals and show you how to empty the trap and reuse it, so let's get on with that. So as you can see, we got all the flies. What I'm gonna do is take the bowl out, and then I'm going to go ahead and kill these flies. As you can see, the bait works amazing. 
you might not want to watch this if you're an animal activist and you're about to be mad, but I'm about to kill all these flies, so this is what I'm going to do to kill them. I'm just going to put it down, and then uh, kind of just smash them, kill them. You're going to get some fly juice on you, don't worry about that. So as you can see, they're all dead in here. There's some still alive, I'm not really worried about that, but as you can tell, a whole bunch of flies, so let's go empty that and let's feed the birds. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna undo this hook so it lays down and then all you can do is shake it and pour them out. Look at all those flies. Of course it's gonna get clogged up, there's a lot of them. So for the most part, that's all of them. So now we're gonna let the birds feast on it. It's pretty cool watching all those flies get eaten by the birds. There was no work to me whatsoever. The trap did all the work. Free food, it's a win-win. So hopefully Justin, this helped you out and anyone else that has the ranch fly traps, some bait works better than others. Another thing that we did was we added some milk in it and let it get hot and nasty and that helps. We tried that on another trap um, when we first got them. But whatever your bait is, it has to stink worse than the surroundings. So if it's goat poop, stick a little bit of goat poop in there. If it's pig poop, stick a little pig poop in there. But add some other stuff to make it stink just a little bit more than your surroundings. And then also don't hang it too high, hang it lower to the ground because that's where all the flags are going is to the poop and stuff on the ground. So lower the trap, get it closer. You know, even if you have to hang it right outside of the pig trap, um, you know, it'll still work. Do what you gotta do, get it just outside of the pig's range, but where the flies go to that. So hopefully that helped. If you're interested in these traps, we'll leave a link down below. It's the ranch fly traps. They're awesome, they work great for us. They're fairly cheap and you can reuse them over and over and over. So it's just an amazing thing for us. Here in Texas, it gets hot. I mean, so hot and the poop stinks and we have flies like crazy. Even when we used to live in the city, the flies were just outrageous. So it's helped us a lot. Hopefully it can help you, but now let's go on with the day. We got other stuff to do. So as a lot of you probably don't ever see, you don't see the outside of our fence here, but we own a little bit outside our fence. And uh, we're gonna set up the electric fence so the goats can start eating along the fence line, eating around these trees, and it's eating all this grass down. So let's get to that. Well, it wasn't really as far out as I thought, but at least for today they can eat that and they'll be happy. So let's go set up the energizer and get them out. So we got them in and I think Mimi just touched the electric fence for the first time. And then I think her tail touched it. we're gonna leave the gate open so they can go in and out whenever they want. They will uh, be able to go in and out of the fence, go get water and all that, but they can come out here, eat all this. So I'm pretty excited. <laughs> So it's pretty cool seeing them eating the grass and all that stuff out here. So it's doing its job. Let's go on and do some other stuff while they keep on eating. I don't think these plants right here, we're gonna water too much because they don't have a way to drain water out. So what'd you guys think of my idea for a DIY shelf in the greenhouse for around $25? can actually be a lot cheaper if you already have the cement blocks. Uh, we had some of these laying around in the back. All we need to do is just go pick up some lumber, but $25, you can't beat it. You saw Jaylena put it together in about five minutes. Got uh, sunflower seeds over here. You can already see that some of them are starting to sprout out. Basically soak them overnight, bring them out, spray them every morning. Over here, Jaylena has uh, different kinds of, I don't know what she has to be honest, but you can see right here, there's something growing. I think there's lettuce and other sorts of stuff in there. I transplanted one of our ochre plants in here. It was actually being covered up by one of our squash plants. So I put it in here. I'm going to let it grow up. I haven't grown any inside of a pot yet. So we're going to see if it grows better in a pot or in the ground. So I dug this one up out of the yard. 
I want your opinion. Do you think this is going to grow in here or do you think it's going to die since I transplanted it from the ground into the pot? I did cut around it. I don't think I cut any roots, but let us know if you think it's actually going to grow or if you think it's going to die. So as Jaylena was saying in her other video, the cilantro wasn't looking the best. So I cut it back, gave it a lot of water. And as you can see here, it's starting to green up quite a bit. So that's a good sign for us. So this greenhouse, it's not super heavy duty. So we had somebody say that we need to anchor it to the ground. So we put in some T-post, anchored it on here. It got some wire, a couple of uh, zip ties holding it down on each side. So hopefully in the next storm, it'll hold up like tough and won't blow away in the wind. That's one of the cooler things about living out here. We live next to an airport or close enough to an airport, the Terrell Airport, that we get these cool planes flying over all the time, a bunch of World War II planes. I love it. So what are you doing over here now? I am wrapping this around, teaching the plant to grow up the windmill. Uh, they are vines, so they like to grow up. So I'm just wrapping them around and kind of teaching them how to grow. So the sun is starting to go down. Now that it's got a little cooler out here, Jaylene is going to water the garden. Jared's kind of picking through, seeing if there's any more food that's grown that we could pick. He just showed you the greenhouse. We're trying to just enjoy the rest of the day, the cooler part of the day. Normally, it's just way too hot, but uh, that's how Jared gets a drink every now and again. It's just where the hole is in the, uh, the hose. So we try not to waste anything around here. So that's what we do. And speaking of that, how many of you guys used to drink from the hose and still alive? I know I did as a kid, always tired. Every time we were tired, my mom would just be like, drink from the hose, and so we would. Guys, so as always, we're in here milking, and I think I might have a competition. Let's see who can milk faster, me or Jaylena. So tomorrow I'll milk and I'll time it in the morning and then she milks in the afternoon and we'll time it and we'll see who's faster. Who do you guys think will milk faster? Me or Jaylena? Me. Oh man. So let us know in the comment section what the loser should have to do. Whoever loses is a slower milker I guess, has to do what you guys want us to do to an extent. So I just fed them. I came out maybe like, I don't know, 30 minutes ago and I checked on them and I collected some eggs. But guys, I just got two more quail eggs. I'm gonna go show you all the uh, eggs we got today alone. So coming in, of course, look at Jared watching our videos. And what in the world are you eating? Bold peanuts. You're not a true Southern boy unless you eat boiled peanuts. Look at all these quail eggs we got. That's today. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven quail eggs today. So should we... Should we eat them? Or should we put them in the incubator and hatch those little boys and girls? Because we just got chicks and then now we uh, have a room. It kind of looks like a boiled peanut. It ain't much bigger. Not really, but. So, like Jared asked, should we put them in the incubator or eat them? I've already tried them, they taste awesome. I think we should incubate them. So should we put these in the incubator? I think so, it only takes 18 days. So maybe we'll collect them for a few more days and then we'll have some quail babies. What do you think? What do you call baby quail? Quail babies, I just said it. Is there a term for babies that are quail? Quail chicks. Little quail? Little quail? Hopefully you liked today's video. It was a little different. Um, Jaylena is leaving. She is going to Washington for a few days. So me and Jared will be holding the fort down while she's gone. I guess that's going to mean that I have to milk the goat all the time. So I'm okay with that. I'm ready for that. Um, we are going to do a little competition uh, between Jaylena and I. And so uh, I guess that gives me some time to practice to catch up to her. So guys, if you need anything, it's down in the description. Anything you need to know about us from Instagram, Facebook. We have a Facebook family group on there. We have the Ranch Flytrap. Um, 
link down there. You can check that out. Um, anything you need to know, it's down there in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.